Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Deadfire with me, Bring It On. Let's continue exploring the Bardado Estate. Right. And by explore, I mean pillage. That looks complicated. Shutting the door? <laughs> yeah, I bet it does. So I'm pretty sure we read an Aethasian prayer in the first game. But I think it was just this first verse. I don't recognize the second two. I mean, it's possible we read it, but I'm going to go ahead and read the whole thing again. And the sun shall break through the darkness. The new dawn arriving with the rebirth of the day. Rejoice, all ye who dwelleth in the shadow, who are broken and beaten. The winter soon comes to an end. Spring shall rise, bringing light and life to the world. Radiant light, radiant life, and thy soul shall find warmth in his arms. All creatures bask in his glory. The rays of his countenance bathe the world, bringing an end to the night, ushering in the day. Kneel before him and wonder at his benevolence. Feel the warmth of his radiant presence. If thou art broken, he shall make thee whole. If thou art in darkness, he shall bring thee to the light. If thou art sinful, thou shalt be reborn. If thou art cold, his warmth shall bolster thee. How canst I, so lowly and worn, speak words of proper adulation? Thine eyes, whose gaze sees the sin in me, yet still shows love. Thine hands, whose grip pulls me out of darkness. Thine ears, listening to my every prayer. Thine heart, bright as the dawn, giving me warmth when I am raw. Aethys, light of spring, son of the world, thou givest me life and purpose. If thine heart be black, if thine intention be impure, thy life is forfeit. For he hath seen, he can see, he will see. Nothing is hidden from his glory. His light touches every corner of the world. Nothing is hidden from his sight. If thou doest thy work in the dark, if thou wouldst sleep thine actions hidden, thou shalt be burned in the sun of the new dawn. Day comes soon, prepare for the dawn. Nothing is hidden from his reach. Alright, so as I read that, I actually started to recognize the other two verses. I've read this before as well. That's okay. Because Aetha seems like a pretty major player in this story. Subtle indeed. It is done. There's no harm in being a little bit more familiar with his prayer. I've got it. Ah, yes. The newcomer. I thought you might visit. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> the work of a long... All right, let's speak to Azali Bardato. Lady Azali Bardato, custom dictates, I say, at your service. But I have not the time for such lies. She regards you with a cool expression, but stands with a fighter's poise. When I heard another gold pact had arrived, I knew you would find your way here. She appraises your outfit with a slow nod. You saw my son dueling with the Valera boy. At least he survives to learn from his mistakes. When Valera and Bardato cross each other, only blood and sorrow remain. Azali sighs, her gaze turning away. Whenever I see this whip for the cruel disposition, my first thought is that it's an ear. <laughs> I see your point. Word has spread fast about the little spectacle at the dogs. You've certainly caught everyone's attention. Perhaps the Watcher of Kadnua and House Badato can help one another. I had other questions. Then ask, but do not waste my day with trivialities. Religion and insight. You notice something unusual. Your attention is drawn to Azali's desk. 
Among the assorted ledgers and documents, it's a brass seal, still dripping with heated wax. I look at her armor, I didn't realize it was sitting there. Looks electrified. The drippings have dried into an almond-shaped pattern, which resembles the shape of an eye. An eye fringed with bird feathers. A nictitating membrane flicks across its surface in a barely perceptible wink. Are you still with me? Azali breaks your focus by waving her hand in front of your face. She glances between you and her tidy desk, frowning. Ooh, shady. Let's not say anything yet. So maybe we don't want to point out that we know whatever it is we saw. It might come up later. So say nothing. She nods to you slowly, wearing an uncertain frown. Your family seems very well established here. Ugh. My bank shoulders the costs of the Valian Trading Company's operations in the Deadfire. It is said that no Valian may wipe themselves unless a Bardato signature approves it first. If that's true, we gotta stop shaking hands with them. <laughs> I'm certain you've touched worse, farmhand. Zali's mouth twitches, just shy of a smirk. Why are the Bardados and Valera feuding? Because we do not belong in the same business. The Valeras are opportunists reaping the rewards of happenstance. They're little better than the pirates they're charged with slaying. Better is self-deception, mayhaps. <laughs> the pirate scoffs. About this feud with the Valera family. Patello doesn't make my affairs any easier with his wayward ambitions. Azali motions for you to continue. Would you be willing to speak with Atello? Oh dear. <laughs> You're serious, aren't you? She stifles a chuckle. You think I'd put myself in pistol range of that old imp? I'm probably going to request this, and she's going to say, you have to work for me first. Uh, maybe I could speak with him on your behalf. Convince him to see reason. I think you overestimate how much of my trust you currently enjoy. Yeah, that's what I figured. We'd have to do quests for both sides and then convince them both to stop feuding. I had other questions. More pleasant subjects, I hope. You mentioned you had a job for me. Queen's Beth. Whispers of a Valera plot against my family. Something grander than pointless jewels. You are a newcomer to the Deadfire. Uniquely positioned to loosen Valera tongues. He taps her chin and regards you thoughtfully. Zilly Valera strums a loot by the watchtowers. A meek-tempered boy. Fonder of song and drink than the family business. He might spill something of his family's affairs. This is interesting. We had a similar option with... The Valeros. This one requires both streetwise and clever. And what if there is no plot against the Bardados? Then I will sleep better at night. Azali shrugs, her brow furrowed. My hopes do not hinge on being proven right at every turn. Wouldn't the governor take an interest in this treachery? The governor is interested in how much luminous Adra we can export. Nothing else matters. To that end, I look forward to the day when we won't need Valera thugs backing our interests. I'll go and see what I can get out of Zili Valera. Try not to alert the Valeras of our knowledge. That is the point of involving an outside agent. Nodding, Zali turns her attention to her desk. Farewell. Alright, got a couple quests for both families. Or a quest per family. Oh, let's go check out the uh, vault.
I almost forgot. The guard captain takes his time moving to the barred door, his armor creaking with every step. He praises you with a lazy sweep of the eyes, while his fingers curl casually about the hilt of his blade. You have an appointment to see the vault, sir? A vault? What's in here? The Bardatos are a banking family, Mestre. We hold a great many accounts belonging to our fellows within the Valian Trading Company. We also safeguard those valuables they entrust to our keeping. A matter you may discuss with the lady. Upstairs. Captain makes a hurting motion with his arms as he shepherds you towards the, toward the stairs. It's unlikely we'll be able to get in there without killing the family, I'd guess. I'm assuming that we'll eventually get a quest from the Valeris to break into it. Speak up. Our family can't go on like this. Out for trouble or taking in the sights? Alright, we'll just keep making our way around Queen's Birth until nighttime. When night falls, we go back to the alley and see if we can't take care of those pirates. Alright, let's go to Sansa's Map Emporium. I'm guessing we can buy maps for when we're sailing around the Deadfire to reveal certain locations, so we have points of interest to sail towards. I'll see what I can do. So a look at that, mate. Subtle indeed. It is done. Read that before. Read that before. We've read this before. I don't think we've read that, but we'll revisit that here in a second. Yep, we've read all those. All right, let's read uh, the Skanite scripture. Burn. Feel thy hatred twist within thee. Feed thyself on its bile. Sustain thyself on its anger. This hatred, this bile, this anger. These shall be the tools for thy rebellion. Let thine heart seethe. There is no satisfaction in open confrontation. Hide thine hatred. Let it grow that it may fester. Make thy plots in secret. The quiet slave stays in the shadows. His face seeks not the light. In darkness doth he work. In darkness doth he move. Rebel against those that seek to control thee. Rebel against those that wish to remove thee. This is almost an opposite to the Aothasian prayer. That's interesting. I'm on the usual cart cartographical... Cartography? Cartographical... <laughs> Adds an extra syllable there. Uh, tomes and manuals are a few weathered volumes of travel memoirs and fanciful adventures. Cartographical. Even these scrolls have been painstakingly dusted. Scroll notes track commissions and work orders in progress. Tattered and worn, this map depicts a small region of the Living Lands. These maps of the Deadfire Archipelago are incomplete, hot with gaps denoting unexplored regions. Alright, so counts as stealing. Oh, hello. 
Welcome to my shop. It's such a pleasure to see a new face. Sansa bounces back on his heels, a wide grin plastered on his worn face. How might I assist you? What do you do here? Oh, I am a cartographer. I make maps. I'm not half bad at it either. And may the gods forgive my immodesty for saying so. If you need a map of any settled region of the Deadfire, I am your man. And my commission rates are quite generous. It used to be I would take to the sea and do a bit of charting myself, but I haven't the time. Too many maps need making. A shame, too. There's a whole swath of the Deadfire I've yet to see. I'm quite keen to write a book, in fact. Oh, but I won't trouble you about that. Excuse my nattering on, won't you? Do you sleep here? Uh, <laughs> sometimes. He touches a hand to his forehead and blushes scarlet from his neck to the tips of his ears. Married to the work, you know. I just get so, so engrossed in my maps. And next I know, it's morning. Sharing a bed with a few maps is a good sight better than sharing with Caleb, I'll tell you that. He always hogs the blankets. He rubs the back of his neck. Nice dog. You think so? He is a magnificent beast, isn't he? Sansa's face splits into a broad grin, bright enough to light the room. A faint trace of a smile forms on Adair's lips. He's been a bit low lately. Between you and me, I think he's heartsick for the sea. You said you're writing a book. I'm putting together an explorer's account of the dead fire. Or at least the part of it Queen Onekaza's tribe has laid claim to. My book will be the first of its kind. The Explorer's Club will go mad for it. Or, well, that was the idea. It's a fiercely dangerous enterprise, in point of fact, and nobody will agree to char the islands for me. You'd think ship captains would be a bold-hearted bunch. I offered fair recompense. <sighs> Sansa folds his arms, sighing. I'm not exactly the most powerful fighter, or I do it all myself. Still, wouldn't it be wonderful? An explorer's guide to the dead fire. Someday. If it pays, I'll take the job. Do you mean it? This is... Wow! I can't thank you enough! It's a lot of ground, I mean water, to cover, and some of these islands are in very dangerous waters. Despite his words, the gleeful expression on Sansa's face is not faded. Don't worry, I planned it all out. We'll get your feet wet first. With a little experience under your belt, I'm sure you'll get a taste for it. Nothing will stop us. I mean, you. The idea is to explore all the islands that haven't been charted yet, or even named. That falls to you, Aimiko. You can't tell me you've never wanted to name your own island. I thought we could start with the waters around the company outpost at Port Maje. There are two islands in the region, and nobody's taken much notice of them yet. Well, I've taken care of one of those already. Once you're back, I'll start filling in my map and adding your findings to the book. Oh, this will be wonderful. So I wonder if it'll say... Yeah, so we did this one already. Huh? Welcome back, welcome back. It is a pleasure to see you once again. Tell me, how is the sailing? Smooth? Nothing to delay your expedition, I hope. How might I assist you? Show me what you have for sale. Certainly, certainly. It would be my pleasure. Of course, it's mostly books and knickknacks. Maps I do on commission, you see. Oh, okay, we have grimoires we can buy. Interesting, interesting. Nice. Adventurer's Grimoire. It has Iron Scale. Oh, that's enchanting. I can't use that. How unfortunate. And then the Snakeskin Grimoire. Why is it unique? And pricey. Uh, 
Okay, so we haven't read any of these before. The Pitfalls of the Dead Fire, Volume 1, The Crystal Empress. This traveler's guide is circulated for the benefit of newcomers to the Dead Fire Archipelago. One passage stands out. Avoid at all costs the Spider Baranga. She is a menace to the Isles, a poison dripping terror of legendary proportions. Her ravenous young swarm unwary travelers. Her rage is nigh unimaginable. A single broodling is harmed. Seek her out at your own peril. The Deadfire Visitors Preservation Society takes no responsibility for harm inflicted by knowing ignorance of the risks, and every effort has been made to keep travelers away from the following coordinates. Why? Oh, do I have to buy this to unlock it? I'm wondering if I do. A map of Belronga's position is marked off with a wax seal in the shape of a skull. It points toward an island west of Andra's mortar. Yes, yeah, so I'm assuming we have to actually buy these to reveal the locations. Alright, uh, so Volume 2, The Voracious Mountain. Uh, this traveler's guide is circulated for the benefit of newcomers to the Deadfire Archipelago. One passage stands out. Do not dispose of sick livestock by feeding them to Hwane, Owei. That primordial abomination has grown to the size of a mountain already, thanks to misguided pilgrims worshipping it as a god. A dire warning. Hwane Owei vomits forth a symbiote that endures a motionless host and reproduces on a moving one. Simply avoiding the creature at all costs will prevent grave peril, infestation, and probable death. As always, the Deadfire Visitors Preservation Society takes no responsibility for harm inflicted by knowing ignorance of the risks, and every effort has been made to keep travelers away from the following coordinates. 2552 South, 3422 East. A map of Hwani Away's position is marked off with a wax seal in the shape of a skull. It points toward a lagoon south of Dunnage. Hi, right, Volume 3, Sigil Master Aranik. Alright, so we can skip the first part and some of the um, second to last paragraph. A sigil master, Aranik, is on the loose. She was sentenced for planting deadly sigils in populated areas and effected her escape with nothing more than a stone game piece and an inkwell. Trust in the authorities and make no attempt to apprehend her. To have flanked herself in sigils pow powerful enough to explode unwary visitors on the spot. And stay away from coordinates 4 by 50 south, 67 by 31 east. A map of Arnix's position is marked off with a wax seal in the shape of a skull. It points toward an underwater cave far to the northeast. And volume 4, the Hellfire Colossus. Animancers visiting from afar do not seek out Dora Dugan, the Iron Tyrant, for academic research. Death will surely follow. Whoever created this fire-spitting behemoth is responsible for the calamitous inferno is wrought on the isles. The society is unaware if the Ironclad's creator died at its hands, but justice itself would demand that they be vaporized by the very flames they so recklessly stoked. We can find it at 38 by 37 south and 31 by 21 east. A map of the Hellfire Colossus' position is marked off with a wax seal in the shape of a skull. It points toward a desert wasteland in the southwestern corner of the Deadfire Archipelago. So I wonder if reading those is enough, or if I look at, uh... not let us. Let's buy one and see Welcome what happens. Back. How might I have certainly? I might have stuff to sell as well. And we actually turn a profit there. Let's 
So maybe just reading it is enough to... Welcome back. How might I have certainly said? We still made more money than we spent here, so let's go ahead and buy it. Mm -hmm. I was going to say we speak to Caleb. Kassanza said he missed the sea. Uh oh. I heard the game was going to crash there. <laughs> yeah, so I figured we'd be able to recruit him to our crew or something, but it does not seem to be the case. You're right. He does do that with his hands. Fine. Tis rough in his precious spelly book that scares the lad. Or maybe tis notching his wee finger. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta stop. My sides hurt. <laughs> oh, oh, I miss this. Surely you've spied how he's always brushing himself. He won't say, but he's afraid of seagull shit. All right, Luminous Audra Mill. Daily arrivals and deliveries of crude and refined luminous Audra are carefully logged here. Just walk back. Oh, whole crates of luminous Audra. Interesting. Dim in the lantern. Oh, well, we could definitely uh oh look around back here. Oh shoot! Almost yes. Had it. Indeed. Let's split up real quick. I think we can take all this stuff. What for, Cap? Yeah. He's gonna stop us, right? Oh. I mean, why not? It's gotta be valuable, right? Indeed. That's what everyone's here working for. Ahoy. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, probably no way to get to this one. Yeah. Right. Ahoy. Aye. Aye. What do you need? Ahoy. Done and done. How may I help? How may I help? You're not able to get into those. Yes? These, on the other hand, I think we can. Aye. Nice and quiet. Of course. Well, maybe not. Aye. On it. These crude shards of luminous Audra retain their unearthly glow. All right, let's speak to Cortina. Cortina's voice finds you before she does. Her barks of laughter and cheerful directives resounding throughout the mill. She flits from worker to worker, offering critique and approval. When she finally spots you, a shadow of apprehension passes over her face. She hides it with a toothy grin. If you are here about the taxes, tell the queen. Oh, you are not the tax collector. She narrows her eyes. Her hand twitching at the hilt of her blade. The second person do that to us. This episode. 
What business brings you to my mill? Uh, who are you? Okay. Martina leans in close. One prodigiously furry eyebrow raised. You go around asking just anyone in Queen's Birth personal questions. Maybe you end up dead in a ditch. Have caution, eh? I think I'll be okay. Lucky for you, I am a woman of honor. She gives you a sunny smile and claps her hands together. I direct luminous milling for the Valian Trading Company. It's a nice job, huh? And I'm quite good at it. You want to know more? I need a drink first, per guano. Martini claps you on the shoulder, a playful smile on her lips. What do you do here? Martina looks about the room with exaggerated wonder, her green eyes wide. She laughs a little to herself, runs a finger across the arm of the chair beside her. She holds the finger up for your inspection. It's caked in shimmering blue dust. We mill luminous, of course. Take big chunks, break into smaller chunks, crush into dust-sized chunks. Per complanquenet, it is really not so complicated. She gives you a condescending little pat on the arm. <laughs> Farewell. Good day. <laughs> well, she can't be too good at her job because we robbed her half blind. A wet dog. I already have one guest in my head. I don't need another. Sorry, lad. Thought that chip on your shoulder were for all to see. Do you ever have a thought and just decide to keep it to yourself? More than you know, my dear inmate. More than you know. I've got it. Abraham. The good dog name. Alright, while Abraham is following you around, your recovery penalty from armor is reduced, and your party members will regain some health when they kill an enemy. That seems pretty good too. Uh, let's go and put him in my main character's inventory. Oh. I shall. How much does it reduce it by? Let's find out. Don't see. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to give me an accurate number. We just have How to trust that it's working. <laughs> Alright, so let's leave the mill, then we'll wrap up the episode, and in the next one we'll continue around Queen's Birth. It's been very slow going, but there's a lot to do and take in already. Well, I guess we knocked out three buildings, because we did the Bardado Estate, Sansa's, and uh, the Luminous Audra Mill. But the next one, we will continue, we'll loop around towards, uh, I guess we'll get to the Wild Mare next. I'm oh, sorry, I couldn't get to the Cobbler, we have to go up these stairs to get there. Okay. Yeah, we'll just loop around to the south and then west. But for now, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.